Welcome to Lesson 33, where we're going to dig into objects a little deeper and create a template of an object called a class. Classes and objects are closely related. An object is a, I'm going to call it a physical manifestation of a class. A class is a blueprint. Again, think of houses and blueprints. You can't live in a blueprint, but the blueprint tells you how to make a house over and over and over again. That's what a class does for us. It gives us a blueprint, a prototype that we can then instantiate or make an object out of. So if you hear that fancy word instantiate, you can now use it as co at cocktail parties if you want to sound intelligent like a developer. And I'm going to take you on a journey of what that process looks like. A lot of this will look familiar. There is some new concepts in here that I want to highlight. So it starts out with var. We know what var is. Person equals class.create. That's a keyword in JavaScript that says, I'm going to create a class. Where do you see these? You would often see these in script includes. These are libraries of server-side code that you can reuse over and over again. You've probably already used them. Some of them are built into the system, like new glide record. That's how you instantiate this. I'll get to the usage in just a second. So our definition goes something like this. Note the syntax. We have person.prototype equals, and then it looks kind of like JSON, doesn't it? With something defined. It's not function name, and then curly braces, it's function colon, or excuse me, function name colon, and then the keyword function, and your code inside of that, and then a comma so that I can set up lots and lots of these. So this is the standard formatting for a script include. If you're not used to this, you'll get used to it real soon. When you see it in a script include, start by modifying something or take a copy of an example and use this. What you'll often find is that almost all of them will have this initialized. Some will have a process keyword, which is, I want you to run this as soon as it's instantiated. And the rest is function definitions or properties. And it ends with this type keyword down here. So this is a known thing. The pieces that match are the var person, the person prototype, and I believe that should not be in quotes. I'm not sure how that got in there, but that's the way we'll do it in service now. See what happens. <laughs> it might work. Now, when I want to use a new, when I want to get a new person record, remember this is just a blueprint up at the top of the script. I can instantiate it by saying, me is a new person, you is a new person, us is a new, you know, student is a new person. I can use this blueprint over and over by saying new person here, new person there. And then best practice is not to say me.firstName equals Chuck, as we saw in some of our earlier examples, but using these getters and setters. Notice I called these set first name, set last name, get display name. May seem a little trivial in this example. Also notice there's this, this keyword. This refers to the object's own self. So I can reference the first name property, which I set in initialize. This gets automatically run. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to say this. But initialize automatically gets run when the object is instantiated. So I'm creating these two new properties, first name and last name, within the object and initializing them to nothing. Then as I call set first name with a particular string, it sets its internal first name variable, which is known throughout this class object, <laughs> throughout the object. Oh, well, the, the terminology is getting me. So I say set the first name to Chuck, makes it very easy to read these things. And if I want to change the functionality of set first name, rather than just set the first name, but it, maybe it sends a log, maybe it does something else, maybe it validates that you actually sent it a string and not a Boolean, so you don't end up with crazy names. Maybe it sanitizes the input to say, my name isn't Little Bobby Tables, <laughs> okay? Uh, you could do that without impacting the API. This is my API, this is my function call, this is my method of interacting with my object. Easy to build, easy to debug, easy to maintain. So I can change this later without changing the API. People can still interact with my object in the same way using set first name, set last name. 
they don't even need to know that these internal variables exist. It could be F name, L name, and then tomorrow I change it to first name, last name. Doesn't matter to them because this dot first name and this dot last name are not exposed. Okay. Now I could get at them if I knew what they were by saying me dot first name, but it's not advised. I should be doing the get display name, which may concatenate two things. It may know that it's a three part name. It may know that there's a suffix and a prefix and put on a title, you know, Sir Walter Raleigh Jameson the third. Okay. That's not a simple first name plus last name, but you get the idea. And then I can get that out of there. So let's take a look at what we get out of this. I would instantiate this, populate the first name, last name, display them in a dot notation, which isn't recommended because it's not exposed through the API, and then do the proper by going and getting the display name. So should look somewhat familiar to what we've done in the past with an object. Only now I'm defining my own object. I'm defining my own class that I can build an object and interact with that object at the same time. So there it is. This is the me version where I get the dotted notation, not advised. And this is, hey, what do I get if I just say, go get the display name. So having those APIs to interact with that object, very, very handy. There's one other thing that I wanna show you about this. And that is, if you want to consolidate perhaps this initialize part, because initialize is done right when I get here. By the time I've got a var me, that has something in it, initialize is already run. Well, our initialize said, set them to blank. I could do something like this. This is the exact same class, except for these two lines. I'm going to say, initialize, you have two parameters. And I want you to take the first one and stick it on the first name, take the second one, stick it on the last name, and then I will use those throughout. How do I do that? When I instantiate with a new class name, I'm going to pass you two arguments. Now, obviously I'm not doing any error checking to see are they empty, are they actual strings. I could do that in my initialize and I have done stuff like that before. Did you pass me something that is a glide record or a sys ID? Because if you gave me a sys ID, then I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna go do the glide record lookup myself so that I can get the all the other objects that go with it. So that's one way to do that. And then of course I do my get display name, I can then say, well, let's change this later to say it's not Chuck Tomasi that I initialized the value with. I'm going to set it to Fred Luddy. Or I could instantiate a new object that says var u equals new person Fred Luddy. So I'm still interacting with the same object me in this case, but wanted to give you a little insight as to how that might work. Looks very trivial when you see the output, but what's happening behind the scenes is very, very powerful because you've got the ability to maintain your code at an abstract level to say, all right, I am giving you a way to interact with my object. This could be a full-blown integration. It could be updating records in the database. You just say what you need and I'll take care of it. A way of putting together a collection of functions. This one happens to be a collection of things to manage a person's name but you could have a wide variety of things. How do I interact with YouTube? Here's a collection of functions. You just tell me what the key is or what the title is or when it was published or how many views you wanna get and I'll go take care of the dirty work on the back end. That way if the dirty work ever changes, I don't need to go change everywhere that calls that block of code. So a little bit better than just straight up functions, I'm collecting them into like functionality and being able to interact on an object level. If you want more information about script includes and some of their value, go take a look at uh, TechNow, I believe it was episode six. TechNow is available by doing a search on the community, community.servicenow.com, T-E-C-H-N-O-W. Look for TechNow episode list. You'll have a better luck than just looking for TechNow. And it will show you all the episode lists there. We did one in 2013, I believe it was, on script includes still very useful and we've got illustrations andrew and i go back and forth and have some friendly banter so take a look at that i invite you and in the next video we will be covering more about classes and how to extend those so look forward to talking to you about that thanks for watching